All right, we're back to recording. <clears throat> if you remember yesterday, we began to learn the what's called the Devar Malchut, the royal words of the Rebbe. <clears throat> and the Rebbe explained, these are from speeches that the Rebbe gave just months before he had his stroke, which rendered him mute, so he couldn't speak. <clears throat> And the, the, so the Rebbe explained, this is 1991, right? We're at the end of 1991. So the Rebbe explained this whole idea of Shemot, the names of the Jewish people. And what's so important about the names of the Jewish people? So it says the names of the Jewish people, <clears throat> that somehow or other indicates <clears throat> the power of the Jewish people to go out of any limitations. <clears throat> Yesterday, <clears throat> that's what we got up to. So Yuv and Zebehechtem, we can understand this. <clears throat> and by explaining the Mishnah in the first um, chapter of the of the first order of, of Mishnahs in the um, in, in the oral Torah, brachot. What does it say over there? <coughs> it says like this: Omer Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah said, Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah, Hari Anika ben Shivim Shana. I'm like seventy years. He was really only eighteen years old. I am like seventy years. And I did not merit that they should say Yitziut Mitzrayim Balaylos. Now, what's it mean, Yitziut Mitzrayim? It means the sentence in the Torah that says about Tzitzit. That sentence, that paragraph about Tzitzit, you know, the commandment of Tzitzit, of what do they call it? The, the strands that are put on the garments. There's a commandment, and that commandment ends with the words, I am God that took you out of Egypt. That's how it ends. <clears throat> I am your God that took you out of Egypt. <clears throat> Rabbi Eliezer ben Azariah, he wanted that this should be said in Shema Yisrael. There's a commandment to say Shema Yisrael. We have to say it twice a day. It's a commandment, minimum twice a day. You're supposed to say Shema Yisrael. And there's, you say the first line, the first paragraph, <clears throat> Ideally, you're supposed to say the first two paragraphs. Said Rabbi Eliezer, I want that you should say three paragraphs when you say Shema. <clears throat> the first two, which are written clearly in the Torah, and the third one, which is written in a, a different place, and it talks about, I am God that took you out of Egypt. And that's how it ends. <clears throat> so the rabbi said, okay, you know, maybe we can say it in the daytime, but not in the night, because there's no commandment to put on tzitzit in the nighttime. What are we talking about? What are you talking about this thing about tzitzit in the, in the nighttime? You want to say about going out of Egypt? Good, maybe find another sentence, but why this? He says, there is no other sentence. I want, <clears throat> I want this to be said. It was very important to him. But he didn't merit to it. So there's a whole story in the Gomorrah that talks about there was a big argument between Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua and Rabbi Eliezer. And finally, in the end, <clears throat> Rabbi, and, Rabbi, and, and finally in the end, <clears throat> that um, <clears throat> Rabbi, um, Rabbi um, um, Shimon, uh, Shimon ben Gamliel. And finally, in the end, they deposed Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. That's a different different story, Rabbi, Rabbi Yeshua. They deposed Rabbi Gamliel. They deposed him. Rabbi Gamliel. They said he was too strict, so they deposed him. Now the question was, who is going to be the new leader? So they thought this person, this person. They said, well, Rebbe, Rebbe, maybe Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah. <clears throat> he comes from a very holy background, and he'll be. So they installed him. He was the the uh, he became the leader of the high court about the Sanhedrin. <clears throat> he became the the head. So on that day, it said he passed the law. He passed the law. So my whole life, along that he it was only 18 years old, but the, a miracle happened and he grew white beard 
It said that he received the years of Shmuel and Navi, that he died when he was 52 years old and they added up. So he became like 70 years old. <clears throat> so he said, <clears throat> I never merited that they would say the sentence about going out of Egypt in the nighttime until I heard from Ben Zoma. <clears throat> ben Zoma. One second. Excuse me. Excuse me one moment. <clears throat> ben Zoma said, you should remember the days of going out of Egypt, all of the days of your life. This is what Ben Zoma said. These are the days. You should remember the going out of Egypt, all the days of your life. That means in the daytime. They left Egypt in the daytime. What says, call It says, all the days of your life. It says, this is to include the nighttime. If it would just say, the days of your life, so you'd have to remember going out of Egypt in the daytime. That's enough. But because he said, call all the days, this includes the day and the nighttime as well. So that's where he said, I got my way. I got my way. Now, And that's what we do. When we say Shema Yisrael, we say it twice a day. We say also that part about Tzitzit, which ends with, I am God that took you out of Egypt. And so and that's what Ben Zoma said. The Chachamim said, Yamei Chayecha, they agreed with him. <clears throat> you can say it in the nighttime, but they have a better way. Yamei Chayecha, this represents Olam Azeh. You should remember all of the days of your life, the going out of Egypt means while you're alive. Call Yamei Chayecha, all the days of your life, what does it mean, all the days of your life? All the days. La vie, to include the days of the Mashiach. This is to include the days of the Mashiach. Oh, so what's going on over here? <clears throat> what's the argument? What do we care? What's the big argument? Rabbi Elazar ben Azariah said, I want, oh, Rabbi ben Zoma, he made me happy today. He said that we should say, this thing about going out of Egypt, and the sentence that includes going out of Egypt about the tzitzit that ends with going out of Egypt, we should say it in the nighttime. <clears throat> it says the rabbis, they said an additional thing. Then it means not only in the nighttime, but it means you should also remember going out of Egypt in the days of the Mashiach. When Mashiach comes, you should still say Shema, you should still mention this third paragraph about going out of Egypt. Perish Rashi. Rashi says, what's going on here? Let's say, Rashi says, Ben Shivim Shana, when Rabbi Elizabeth Ben Azari said, I am like 70 years, Kavar Ayiti near Zakin, that I appeared to be old, Belo Zakin Mamish, I appeared to be old, but a ball of Seva, that there came upon him old age, Beyom Shaviro Rabbi Gamliel, the day that they evicted Rabbi Gamliel from being the head, Omino, and they appointed Rabbi Elizabeth Ben Azari, Nasi, Kedisa Lakam, like it says, in another part of the Gomorrah, to feel the Shachar. That day, Daraj Ben Zoma, on that day, Ben Zoma stood up and he learned this sentence telling you that you should say, talk about going out of Egypt in the sentence about Tzitzit, you should say it in the nighttime as well. It's sort of beer. We have to understand. First of all, we have to understand what, what do we care? I mean, come on, really. That these great men, they had nothing better to do than sit around and you know nitpick about little, you know, what the sentence says and what the sentence means, what the sentence means. <clears throat> so, you know, that's a good point from our point of view. For, but from their point of view, they saw the world in a much truer way. They understood exactly the opposite. You're going to spend your whole life running after money running after power, running after pleasure, running after fame, right? You're running after security. You're, you're going to waste your whole life. You got the Holy Torah. The Holy Torah is the whole source of the world. Every word of the Torah is infinitely important, right? What do you think is important? You want to make a lot of money. That's important. Okay. You know, why not? Yeah, that's a good thing, but that's not really important. Hey, make money is wonderful. We also want to make money. But there's something infinitely more important, more something that's eternal, 
You have no idea what an eternal means. That's why you're running after money. That's why you think it's foolish that we're talking about the Torah. Because the Torah is eternal. And every word of it is the source of the world, the source of all this money that you're running after and the pleasures that you're running after. Nothing wrong with money or pleasure, but put it in the right place. Put everything in proper perspective. You haven't got any perspective. You think that money and pleasure, that's it. That's the whole story. The fact is it's not. That's just the... One aspect of the story, it's very nice. You should use money in a proper way. Everybody should be rich. You should have right? pleasure, have pleasure, one of it, but it shouldn't stand in the way of, of the essence. The essence is, is, is God, the Torah, and true meaning, truth. <clears throat> These rabbis were working every word of the Torah was a million times more important than what happens in the news and what happens in the, in the stock market and whatever. Infinitely more important. We don't feel it. <clears throat> we don't feel it. In fact, we don't even understand how they felt it. But the fact of the matter is that every single word is important. And that's the arguments that they had. These arguments were coming from <clears throat> God. It says, Elu Elu Divri Elohim Chaim. Every opinion in the Talmud is the opinion of God. And God wanted that there should be all these differing opinions to show us the difference. That's what we just finished learning in Hasidut, the world of Tikkun, right? Everything includes everything else. There's all this harmony and, di and differences, etc. Okay, go <laughs> back. Here we go. <clears throat> Just so we put everything in proper perspective, but Torah beer, we have to understand the connection between <clears throat> Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria and the connection to the Mishnah that was said <clears throat> that uh, there's Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria, <clears throat> that Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria, he became the head, the leader. The Mistaber Lomar, that's it's very probable to say, Shemiki, even that since the Rabbi Elazar ben Azaria, that he was learning this chapter of the Torah, of the Talmud, the Torah, Biyom Nasi, on the day that he was made to be the leader, Hari Zakashur, this must be attached some other, with his service of God and his service to serve the Jewish people, and to, the leader of the Jewish people. Al Vakdima, Belimur, Torah, Benyanim, Shazman, Grama. A person is supposed to learn. <clears throat> like, like you're supposed to learn the Torah that's relevant to the times. Right? Now with Shemitah, you're supposed to learn about Shemitah. <clears throat> but yes, Lomar, when the holidays come, you're supposed to learn about the holidays. But Zel Lomar, we can say, Sha'alderich says also every single Jew, and especially every Jew when he's learning Torah, and when his, what things that are relevant to himself. Okay, Rabbi Elizabeth and Azariah, he became the leader of all the Jewish people. <clears throat> he said, I am now like, like 70 years old. Why 70? Okay, so here we go. The Torah is the, the essence of the world, the essence of truth. These were the men that brought the Torah into the world. These were the men that brought the Torah, the details of the Torah into the world. <clears throat> if so, and Rebbe Yelazah ben Azariah, he was the head of all of them. And this was the day that he was chosen to be the head of the Jewish people. And what was he learning about, about should you talk about going out of Egypt only in the daytime or in the nighttime and also in the days of the Mashiach? And how is this connected to his name, Elazar ben Azariah? And also how is this connected to his age? Because every detail we'll see has a great importance to it. Be your Indian. Explanation. Mishan Azu, in this year... Boli de bitui. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I misread. And the Mishnah Zu. And this Mishnah comes to an expression, Godle Eloi, of talking about going out of Egypt. What's the argument? Rabbi Elazar ben Zarya said, I wanted that should be mentioned going out of Egypt in the nighttime as well. And the rabbi said, not only in the nighttime, but also in the days of the Mashiach. <clears throat> going out of Egypt, you have to talk about going out of Egypt. What's so important about talking about going out of Egypt? Even after the Jewish people left Egypt. Nevertheless, there is an obligation for us to remember going out of Egypt all of the days of our life. Also in the daytime. Also in the nighttime. And also in the days of the Mashiach. Like the Wabbis say. The reason for this is why it was so important about remembering what went when we left Egypt. We left enough. Who, yes, are Godel, because this is a big foundation, the Amur Chazak, and a very firm pillar, the Torah Tenu 
in our Torah and in our faith. Jewish people. Because what happened when the Jewish people left Egypt? That's the foundation of the Jewish people, right? The Jewish religion was founded by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's our attitude toward God. But the Jewish people, that was founded by Moses when we left Egypt and we received the Torah. As then, <clears throat> what happened when we left Egypt? A new thing, Geula, redemption. Shabbat Yisrael, that the whole entire Jewish nation, Yatsu Megera of Avdus, they went out from slavery, the Nasu Chorin, and they became free people, but not just free people from Egypt, they became free, essentially free. What does it mean, essentially free? They were free to serve the creator of the universe. Avadayim, they are my servants, the law of Adim Lavadim, and they are not servants of servants. It was the Egyptians are just supposed to be servants of God also. And the Jewish people, they were slaves to them. The, Jew, the, the Egyptians just imagined that they were ruling the world. They're not the rulers of the world. God is ruling the world. God just gave them the power to be rulers of the world. We see what happened. Ten plagues, pff, no more leaders. They're not leaders anymore. <clears throat> the Jewish people, they got to be the servants of the king of the universe. Oh, that's true freedom. But over the Pu'ula and Imshechus Tamid, when they left Egypt, this began something which is above time. It's constant. Every Jew in every moment, in every place, no matter where, even if the Jew doesn't know that he's a Jew, he is a servant of the creator of the universe. He's totally free <clears throat> from any of the falseness and egotism and whatever of this world. Free. What does this mean as far as we're concerned? Going out of Egypt, this indicates Yetzia going of freeing releasing the godly soul from the mitzorim v'gavulim shall maser aguf from the body v'olam azeb achlal and this world in general leith kasher to be attached v'yitacherim akodesh baruch hu and united with God al yadei by means of Torah and the commandments it can't even since shazel winyan kloli this is a general thing of all the Torah and of Judaism. Let's just take, let me give you an example. Let's take a person that's a genius in music. Genius, fantastic in music. I'll just give you a little example. I mean, I'm not Rachmaninoff. See, Rachmaninoff was an amazing genius. From birth, he, he would just hear a song. He could play the whole thing. One time, he would play the whole thing on the piano with the chords and everything, right? And he wrote beautiful, amazing symphonies. Now, imagine he was born deaf. He was born deaf, right? And his family says that, you know, What's going to come of him? Absolutely nothing. He's deaf, so he can't talk. He can't sing. He can't hear music. So obviously he can't um, he can't participate. Yeah. He can't participate in, in, in any sort of concerts or anything like that. He can't, right? So therefore, and, and he believes it. He believes it. He sees people's mouths moving. He can't understand what they're saying. He has to learn a little bit of Braille. He sees that people are swooning when there's music. He has absolutely no idea what, what's going on. Then suddenly one day, a doctor comes and says, here, I got a pill. He takes the pill. He can hear. All of a sudden, he can hear. What happens? A whole new world of music and harmony and beauty. And he's making other people happy also with his music. And, he, and it's other people, it gives them peace in life and, and harmony in life. A whole new world just opened up to him. Right? So he, too, is, he's free from his limitations from his deaf and deafness, but he's free to <clears throat> write music, integrate with new harmony, make people happy. It's a whole new world of reality opens up to him. Now, music existed before he could hear. He just couldn't hear it. The same thing the Jewish people, when the Jewish people were in Egypt, so they were deaf, blind, and they couldn't see godliness. They couldn't hear godliness. They were slaves every single moment of their life. They had to do what the Egyptians wanted them to. The time they had to, in the nighttime to sleep was only to rest up so that they would be able to do like the, like in the concentration camps. Right? They were, they were working every single second in fear of their life every moment. 
Then when they got out of Egypt, they were free to serve God. Free to serve God. And that's it. Now we're free. Right? Not exactly. Since we got out of Egypt, we have that aspect of freedom inside of us. We have that aspect of being able to go out from deafness and blindness and crippledness or whatever, spiritual deafness. We have the ability to go out of our own personal Egypt. Because when after we saw, after the Jews left Egypt, what did they do? They worshiped the golden calf. They didn't want to receive the Torah. They didn't want to go into the land of Israel. They wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back. So like they say, God took the Jews out of Egypt, but he didn't take the Egypt out of the Jews. <clears throat> so now, but we have, nevertheless, when we left Egypt, he implanted in us this ability to go out of all limitations. That's what it means that you should remember, why you have to remember every day. The going out of Egypt, call you mechayecha all of your life, until that every single generation and every single day a person is obligated to see himself as though he left Egypt. This is in the 47th chapter, 47th chapter of the time. And in detail, there is three levels, <clears throat> three different aspects of this going out of our own personal limitation. And nowadays you can see how tremendously popular this has become. There's all this coaching and <clears throat> meditations and things that they, that the people, because people realize that they have to get fixed up. People have the wrong attitudes toward the world. They have the wrong goals in the world. They have the wrong values. They have the wrong reactions. They have the wrong, and they want to get themselves fixed up, right? Everybody. And the fact of the matter is, is that it's true. They're all, it's all true. But the ultimate getting fixed up is being aware of the creator. And that's what happened when the Jews left Egypt and they brought this into the world to all mankind. That's what Mashiach is going to do. He's going to take people out of this thing called selfishness. Selfishness has creeped in, especially we see all the religions in the world are based on selfishness, right? I want to go to heaven. I want, you want to come with me to heaven? Believe in this. I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to get, I will, I get blessed. I get real, I get, right? That's, the, that's what all the religions, okay, religions in a way are good because you're connecting to something that's above you. But on the other hand, <clears throat> that's, that can also be like let's say from from going from the firing from the from the frying pan into the fire. <clears throat> Sometimes a person thinks that these different religions are the answer. He's just gone from one form of egotism to another one. <clears throat> a maskir, and therefore, so there were three levels of this going out of Egypt. Number one, we talk about going out of Egypt every day. Kishemir or Yom. This is how it was before Rabbi Elazar bin. Right, we the. We mentioned going out of Egypt in the daytime. When there's shining light, the God called <clears throat> light, he called day, every day. Then means we have to see ourselves as though we're going today from Egypt. Avodah Sosho Yehudi, to go out of his limitations. Right? Thanking God for what we've got and realizing that we have to go further. Then there's another thing is... Chirush Nosef, in addition, we have to remember going out of Egypt in the nighttime. That's what Ben Zoma said. Not just the days of life, but call Yomay to include the nighttime. That even in the time when it's night and dark, when there's no light of godliness, but like it was for the Jews in, in Russia because they took away education, the Jews in, in America, because they they reject totally any idea of godliness and religion and this. Even in the Jews when they're in exile, and we have good reason not to think about God, because we don't see any miracles, we don't see anything, we only see troubles. Yocho also, Gam, Surika, then also we have to go out of Egypt. Not only when the times are good and when we're religious, we can say, yes, I have to go further, I must improve myself, always constantly improve. That's, you know, in a nice way. What about in a bad way? Even when a person is totally trapped and he doesn't even want to go out. He thinks that this is what reality is. Also, it's possible to go out. And then the Chachamim say even more that all the days of your life, this includes not only this world, but also the days of the Mashiach. 
even in the days of the Mashiach, you have to go out of Egypt. What's that mean? Number one, first of all, you have to remember going out of Egypt. There's two aspects of this, remembering the going out of Egypt, even in the days of the Mashiach. <clears throat> now, I thought Mashiach was supposed to come and end all the problems. That's it. Here we say, no, Mashiach is going to come and you have to remember going out of Egypt. So there's two aspects of this. Number one, that there's a law that you have to remember going out of Egypt <clears throat> all the days of your life. This refers to the days of your life in this world, including the days of Mashiach. It was every moment that you're alive, no matter what the situation is, that you're alive in this world and the Mashiach is going to be in this world. And that this includes even go remembering <clears throat> going out of Egypt all the time. You always have to re realize that you are in Egypt, that you have not realized your true potential, and that you have to go further. When Mashiach comes, then it'll even, in a way, be even worse. Then he'll show you how, it says the Mashiach will make the tzaddikim do tshuva. He'll make the tzaddikim, you want to call it repentant, not exactly repent, but do tshuva. Go out of their bad limiting limitations. So then, the, the, when the when Mashiach comes, we'll have to remember going out of Egypt. We'll have to then, that's another, a number one even more, even though they're in the days of the Mashiach. It seems that it's not really going to be rep remembering the redemption, because we'll be in the redemption. Also, then, you have to remember going out of Egypt, and even more, even though that the future, that the true redemption <clears throat> and the future and of the Mashiach will be infinitely greater and infinitely more miraculous than going out of Egypt when we really did go out. Because the fear, the redemption that's going to come by Mashiach, there won't be any more exile anymore. There won't be any more golden calves and refusing to go into Israel. There won't be any more Jews that'll say, you know, I'll do it my way. I don't care about... There won't be any more misinterpretations of the Torah things like that. Everyone will see godliness, right? There won't be Christianity and these things. Won't, they won't exist. Everyone will see the truth of what Hashem is, the reality of what God is. It'll be a true redemption. Oh, I can't be. Everybody will know what God is. That's, a, that's the Mashiach. Nevertheless, Azyev, I mean, Azyev, Ruach Atoma, Birmin it says the spirit of impurity will pass away from the world. That'll be a tremendous redemption. A complete redemption. She ends with call Mitzvah that you'll go out of all limitations, which is not the case when the Jews left Egypt. When they left Egypt, Hayatagula, there was a redemption, true, but there was afterwards there was exile. The first temple was destroyed, second temple was destroyed. And it wasn't a complete redemption. Because a Ra, because the soul, those the bad the selfishness was in the souls of the Jewish people was still strong. Right, like I said before, they took the Jews out of Egypt, but the Egypt still exists inside of the Jews. The Jews wanted to go back to Egypt, it says. Even when they got out, let's return. That's one of the reasons why they had to run away from Egypt. Afopi came, nevertheless, if so, in the future generation, in the future redemption, it's going to be infinitely greater than it was when we left Egypt. When we left Egypt, we still weren't 100% out. In the future redemption, Mashiach, we're going to be out totally. There's not going to be any limitations. We'll be free totally to serve God. All of our abilities will be revealed. Alpha Piquet, nevertheless, Maskirin will have to mention going out of Egypt, even in the days of the Mashiach. So maybe the days of the Mashiach aren't so great, huh? Maybe they aren't. So the review, you have no idea how great they are. No idea. And nevertheless, we'll still have to mention going out of Egypt. The, 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 the obligation to go out and to serve God and change yourself is unending. Hey, yo, because then we'll mention going out of Egypt, Hari Zeraya. So this is a proof. Shazel, Wavor, Toilet. There must be for some purpose. God doesn't want us just to churn water. There must be some sort of an advantage, and some sort of an, a novelty that wasn't going out of Egypt back then that won't even exist in the days of the Mashiach. As great as the days of the Mashiach will be, and as much as it, was, it will accomplish, <clears throat> But nevertheless, there was something there when we left Egypt that cannot be duplicated by the Mashiach. And therefore, we'll have to, what is that thing? What is this? 
tune in tomorrow and find out. And now we're going to do the Hayom Yom. Let's try this. Uh, <clears throat> the Tzemach Tzedek told Rav Hendel, Rav Hendel was a chassid that was, had, it was humble, he was very warmth of heart, he was compassionate, he, he had prayed with tremendous devotion. <clears throat> Although he did not excel in the intellectual mastery of Hasidic thought, he was an elder chassid when the Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak who was a child, the late Rebbe was a child. He had a profound influence on the Rebbe, was often cited in the Rebbe's Sichot. So the Tzemach Tzedek, the Tzemach Tzedek lived about, you know, 150 years ago, and he, this Rev Hendel, he was an old Hasid in the time of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. Right, it's the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. <clears throat> That he was like a, he was born, like, you know, like a hundred years ago, or something like that. So he was. <clears throat> so this Rev Handel, so the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Rebbe of Chabad, he told this Rev Handel, study of Zohar elevates the soul. Study of Midrash. Midrash, like in Ayn Yaakov, arouses the heart. But to heal him, saying Psalms. With, with tears, this cleans the vessel. This cleans the vessel of your heart and soul. Have a good day with Mashiach. Now, God willing, three o'clock, we'll learn more about the Jewish people in exile of Egypt. Have a good day. With Mashiach, now.